What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy MM2K back again with another video. Before we get too deep into this one, I need you to do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, so um, at the time of this recording, Digital Foundry just dropped a video. All right. And the video talks about how there's been a discussion within Digital Foundry because they have what I feel is valid concerns and valid questions about parity as it relates to Microsoft revealing recently that the Xbox Series X will not have titles exclusive to the console. Not necessarily PC. I don't like mixing PC into the whole exclusivity thing because that's a whole different animal. But as far as consoles are concerned, they are not making any games from the ground up that are going to release at launch for the Xbox Series X that are going to be utilizing the power to the best of their ability, to the best of their ability early on. Um, you're hearing a fight in Twitter land and in, in social media about this and i think the discussion is again everybody holding on to their flagpole for their favorite piece of plastic and they're not talking sensibly um i talked not too long ago in a row podcast and and i believe i've done a video that i've already released where i've talked about um how i need my playstation brethren to be honest about sony not showing up to e3 okay i need them to be honest about that um, now I need to go to my Xbox brethren and tell them they need to do the same thing. Okay, so let's go into the details first and then we'll get to the nitty gritty. So Xbox is proposing this whole theory, no consoles left behind, that as games released that are going to be available at launch that are developed by Microsoft Studios, you will be able to get that same game on the whole Xbox One family of consoles. So that means that they're going to be making games that have to support a 1.3 teraflop console all the way up to a 12.7 teraflop console. Okay. And I've brought this up in many discussions and I've heard people say silly things to me back like, well, you're bringing up teraflops, but the Jaguar CPU was the biggest bottleneck. So, you know, that that's the whole thing and those two don't mix together uh-uh no and as you'll soon see in this video that i'm about to play from digital foundry themselves that then proposes two problems problem number one yes is first and primarily the bottleneck don't mention that in this clip that you'll see first and foremost that the bottleneck of the performance of the consoles this generation primarily was the cpu but that's not it even pc that my Xbox brethren want to refer to on a regular basis. Even they have a cutoff as far as the type of hardware that they support when it comes to scaling. For instance, in 2019, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the reboot or whatever you want to call it, that just came out, that just came out in 2019, the minimum requirements for that is a 2.0 teraflop card. That's in 2019. Destiny, Shadow, uh, Shadow Keep, even though that's an older game, but then the, the the updates, you know, are fresher and newer. That minimum spec on PC is a 2.7 teraflop card. Okay, so yeah, even though the Jaguar is the biggest bottleneck, you still have an answer of what type of power output are we going to support in this game even when it comes to scalability there's even a cutoff in pc so people that i'm having those discussions with think about it now you're posing two problems you got the cpu jaguar that they got to support that we know is a serious bottleneck along with the power thing okay and what microsoft is proposing is that going into 2021 possibly 2022 they're going to be making games that have to keep in mind the power output of a 1.3 teraflop when on PC again, they made the cutoff just in 2019 at 2.0 and 2.7. Come on now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's not get silly here. But again, I get it. I'm MM2K. I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's refer to Digital Foundry. Let's do this. Big ups to the homie Zim. Zim uh, created this clip, and I think this clip is very important, and we're going to play it 
right now. Fidelity, I'm talking about, you know, developing core concepts and ideas that could take advantage of this additional hardware, because let's face it, the Jaguar CPUs are awful. Nobody wants to use this on a PC. Uh, they are very outdated and there are harsh limitations that need to be taken into account uh, when developing mm -hmm. for it, as, at least as far as I understand. So what do you think about that? I agree with you in several respects. Actually, we had a discussion about this yesterday where I'd say there was a healthy part. disagreement on views, but uh, you've actually come up with some points that you didn't mention yesterday, which I find difficult to deny. <laughs> Specifically, if we go back to 2013 and we look at Rise, Son of Rome on the Xbox One, I can't for the life of me imagine how Crytek would have done that game on Xbox 360, even though it actually started out as a 360 Connect title from what I recall, I can't see anything like the same experience being delivered on Xbox 360 without just basically gutting the whole Or game. how about Dead Rising so, 3? Right, yeah. It's not a looker, well, that... but they hadn't done Dead Rising at that scale in a large open world with that many zombies and physics and everything before. The 360 era games were all divided up into loading areas and smaller chunks. And even then they had yep. serious performance issues. So that's another example of a game design that probably wouldn't have worked on 360. Well, what I will say about this is, first of all, launch titles, it's very rare that the full capabilities oh, of the yeah. hardware are actually tapped into from day one. Secondly, I would say that what developers have managed to get out of the current generation has been nigh on miraculous considering the limitations that you mentioned specifically on the piece on the CPU side so you know I would say that it's going to be a really messy cross-gen period here and I suspect it's going to be quite extended I mean in this um, interview Matt Booty is saying the next year two years so you know if we look back to prior cross-gen periods I mean we've been looking at most a year for anything other than sort of Call of Duty and FIFA really so yeah, I do suspect it will be quite messy there. Okay, so now let's, let's be sensible here. In the words of Digital Foundry, this is gonna be a messy cross-gen period here. I suspect it's gonna be messy for a while. I am paraphrasing a little bit, cause you know I'm old, I can't remember everything, but you get the gist, okay? Look, two big takeaways from this. First and foremost, um, like I've said before, I want to get this out of the way. Like I've said before, Microsoft cuts off their own nose to spike their face because regardless of what you guys are saying out here in the Twitterverse, it is Phil Spencer himself that lays credence to Digital Foundry's words, even though your boy MM2K, I don't live and die off of what they say, but because my Xbox brethren do, I'm going to shine the mirror at you, mirror, mirror on the wall. Okay? Who's the truth teller of them all? And with that being said, Digital Foundry, the people that you are so beholden to, that your leader, Phil, said, Digital Foundry does so much good work instead of catering his own message. Now that he's given credence to the things that come out of their mouth, this is the stuff that they're saying. I've did a video on this a, a long time ago. When y'all get tired of playing 51st dates and doing the same silly, stupid stuff over and over again at nauseum, maybe one day you'll learn. And maybe Phil will learn too. On to point number two. Point number two is, which was brought up, which I think is a valid concern in the video and is being discussed out here in social media, is it's not just about the resolution and the graphics. Look, the Xbox One X, I've told you, even though I'm, I got my feelings about Xbox, I told you I love what it can do as far as a console is concerned, the way that it looks, the way the third parties looked on it. I just said that that disparity wasn't big enough for the mass market they didn't care they've already heavily invested in the playstation because it was known that the playstation gives you the overall better experience okay so here's what that's here's why in a couple of videos ago i said my xbox brethren they have built themselves they have dug themselves so much in a silo they cannot reason with or they cannot um associate with the the average gamer Okay, they've built their own mind state of, of gaming. Graphics are important. Visual fidelity is great, but it's not the tell-all, be-all of everything. It's all about the complete immersion. And the way things are now is that the immersion of Xbox games are lackluster. So now you put yourself in a situation 
okay, where your immersion it could potentially be hampered because you have no games that can take advantage even early on on the type of power that they can produce. Like they said, how the AI is going to interact. There's things done on Rise that could just would have hampered the experience if it was made cross-gen with the 360. Same with uh, Dead Rising 3. They also talk about in the full video, go to YouTube and watch it, Horizon Zero Dawn. And the PlayStation 4, they wanted to implement flying. They couldn't do it, so they had to take it out. And the PlayStation 5, I bet you Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is going to be exclusive to that console, right? So it doesn't have to worry about any bottlenecks, whether it's the CPU, the teraflops, anything, okay? So we got to wake up, recognize, and strategize, okay? Instead of sitting there holding your favorite flag and just worrying about the people across the street, go back to your respective corners. Talk to Phil, my Xbox brethren. These are some valid concerns. I may believe you, but we need more people on board, Phil. How are we going to cater this message? How are we going to explain it in layman's terms to people to make them feel comfortable? That even though you guys are doing no console left behind, that the experience is still going to be enthralling. You guys got some other type of method or something like that that you guys are going to be able to do to still implement um, some you know, AI techniques or something like that on the Xbox Series X that just won't be present on the other consoles, even though the games will still be there. Open up Microsoft. These are reasonable questions and they cannot be answered by YouTubers and people out there on Twitter. We need Microsoft to do it, but you got to raise your voices and open your mouth. Okay. And I'm going to close off with this. I know people get tired of me on this side of the coin talking about stadium, but that's why I love that community so much. You know what I'm saying? If there was any group that had any reason to cap and say, oh, don't say nothing negative, it would be the stadium people. They're getting hit left and right. But what do they do? They ignore the naysayers and they go straight to their field and they say, look, not good enough. Got to do better. Got to explain it better. Get better, better, uh, get better communication, all that stuff. There isn't this damage control. This is the turn into a new generation. This is time for us to reflect as gamers so we can get better as gamers. Not doing all this damn damage control. I get sick of it. Don't you get sick of it? Come on. Nobody's going to do better unless we demand better. And as far as Microsoft is concerned, these are legitimate questions that need to be answered. If there, if there a never was, then that'll be great. But all gamers are asking for are answers and that's it from your boy mm2k let me know what you think about what i had to say in the comment section below because like i always say who cares what i think but if you did like what i had to say you can catch me on the corner of every boulevard baby check out the links below to follow me those links will connect you to the broadband bullies pnts network hard knock digital culture channel which we did a fantastic episode of nro podcast and to the stadia dosage and with that said you all have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace